Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna check out this super cool score I got in an antique store the other day. Animation, how to animate, how to learn to draw animated characters like Preston Blair, old Disney animator. This has survived since 1942. Take a look and I'm just putting this together for you to screenshot different parts of it. I'll zoom in on a couple places for you to just see how they were animating different character illustrations from one frame to the next frame. And so yeah, let's dive into it and see what you think. So here at the beginning, we have the construction of the head, and I'm just gonna read a couple of the pieces in the in this animated book. So the top of it here says, think of the head as a rounded mass, either ball-shaped, pear-shaped, egg-shaped, as the case may be. In animation, this head shape may change perspective and form a great number of times during a scene. To simplify matters, a correct perspective framework should be drawn first, then details constructed over the form. And so we can see that this egg shape shape is just over and over and over drawn and the perspective of the face is changing all the way throughout and then over here on the right we have more head constructs and we can see down here at the bottom as well as clearly some child that thought this was a coloring book and I would say this one's in pretty good condition so now we're moving on to stretching and forming heads so a cartoon head can be stretched or squashed to strengthen an expression you'll notice that an oval containing the eyes does not change greatly most variable is the mouth area Small details also react like the large form in which they are. So we can see up here we have this kind of long face, then we have this squished face. And two examples up here at the top that I'll zoom in for you right about here. So you can see a long face, more squashed face, and then a, a progression of a couple things. And then over here we have body built from rounded or circular shapes. And so this is a technique that's most often used in, just in general. This is in a lot of drawing books is these kind of pieces, right? These bigger circles for the body of like the animal or human or whatever. And then these smaller shapes to determine different parts of the body. So here be paws. It could be hands. Here it's the head and you add your ears and stuff like that after. So we've got a couple of different versions of that. The next page we have the skeleton foundation and this is a foundational structure that I really like to use in just general uh, drawing of, of bodies so you can see up here this kind of you start with a line as the skeleton and you kind of fill out that skeleton and then you start putting in all of the different pieces to create depth in here and so here we have the same thing throwing a ball action but we started with just a skeleton of the of the action and then we ended with the more filled in version of it so here's a more kind of detailed version of drawing so we start with the line start adding in start adding in start adding shape start adding depth and then you complete it with the illustration this is kind of similar to a piece that I just finished recently uh, here where I actually started this with the line and I added a leg and I added arm as stick figures and then I kind of bubbled them in and then I went from there and kind of added my shape and my uh, my stylizing of the character so I did this same kind of form actually use to, to get this final product. So this method works. Okay, so now we have birds. So what's interesting about this page, I won't read all of the paragraphs, is that you see this a lot in animations even now today, especially in Disney stuff, is that the wings are kind of this extension of hands. And so he's drawn like a hand here and then drawn a wing around it where the individual feathers there at the end kind of function as a hand, which is really, really cool. So that's kind of a way to take your, your illustrations to the next level. And so you can see that kind of illustration down here you can see that down here at the bottom where he's kind of pointing there and then right there where he's kind of like making a making a little pose or whatever uh, but that's a really easy way to kind of take that illustration and give it more character all right the screwball type in this formula you will recognize some features that all these cocky wise guys have in common so an elongated elongated head not too big very skinny neck really big feet little or skinny legs so you can see it's kind of just taking those traits and illustrating it at a couple different places. Uh, then we have goofy characters over here where they're kind of slouched. Uh, the head, the neck is still really skinny, uh, but the legs are a little bit bigger, right? To, de to, to denote kind of droopiness, right? And the eyes are always kind of saggy, so they're not really like open as much. All right, the heavy pugnacious character. Above is a formula for these bad boys, which applies also to four-legged types as the bear, below and the bulldog on the next page so comparatively small cranium big barrel chest small hips little short but heavy legs so thick little ears heavy thick neck 
Uh, let's see where else. Arms long and heavy, big old hands. You can see here's a cop with the same kind of method. We've just moved it over here. So it's really cool how he's, he's translating between human and animal and, and, and applying these same effects uh, that you would have as expressions in humans to animals. And so that's what really makes Disney super, super cool is that they figured out these formulas and then they're just doing expressions over and over again. All right, hands. So this is very interesting. This is one of the things that I think most illustrators are uh, find the most difficult. Uh, so hands. To draw the hand first, start as if it were a mitten. Then put the two middle fingers in following this shape. So C. This has got A, B, and C. The little finger is then put in, varying it in any fashion to prevent monotony. It is often a good idea to exaggerate the base of the thumb. And so you've got this pro progression. So mitten, the two right here, add the middle, and then add the, the third one right there. And then I guess if you were drawing a human, obviously you would need one more. So you've got, you've got unevenness here, but you've got togetherness here. You've got holding stuff right here. You've got one finger up. So this is pretty cool. So I mean, I'm doing this just for all of you guys to check out. So you're easily, you can easily uh, stop, pause this video, check out some of these types of hands and maybe jot them down for your own use. Almost anything can happen in a take. The figure may stagger or fly through the air, the eyes may pop out, lose hair, coattails, all fly up, contribute to some kind of surprise effect. So it, basically it's showing you action here, right? So we've got startled, startled, startled. Then over here we have a bunch of different, uh, looks like kind of the beginning structure. This is just more illustration from simple shapes. Okay, the basic bouncing ball action. All right, I'm going to read this. So as a ball falls, its speed increases. Drawings are spaced further apart on five. So see, these are numbered. I'm not going to number. I'm not going to read all of that, but these are numbered one through 17. Ball at its highest point slows up. The drawing space closes and then resumes the natural shape. So then we have gap here. So close together, gap, 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 space, close together, gap, gap. Ball follows a definitive path of action. Study close closely the spacing of ball along this path. Notice the basic similarity of this ball action to the hop and jump below, also to the walk, run, leap, and skip. So we've got space, space, closeness, right? And so this is, I mean, obviously this is for animation, right? So this is like, we're not probably using it so much for that. Maybe you are as an animator, probably not anymore because you have all these crazy programs. But for drawing, I think this is a really cool expression of effect here. And then you've got, so you've got the same thing, jumping. Here are some simplified figurines in action to show you the twist and turn and variation of perspective. In the main body masses as the figure animates, building the figurine in solid makes animation easier to feel out. So we've got kind of these blocky movements. You can see here, we're turned, we're pivoted here. Here we're uh, we're square, our chest is front and our hand is turned. Here we've turned our body the opposite direction and our arm is coming up this way. And then now we're turned completely away, jotting out that direction. And the same thing with the horse. So it's really cool how they've shown perspective here. I think this can be very helpful for you if you're struggling because proportion and perspective are going to be probably the two most difficult things that you run into. All right, movements of two legged figures. So this might be a little hard for me to read and show all of you. So I'll just do a quick scan and you can easily just kind of stop the video wherever you think. So we've got walk, double bounce, walk, strut, shuffle, sneak, run, jump, fast run, tiptoe, skip. So these are all really cool methods that you can apply into your characters. So over here we've got walk, trot, canter, gallop, sneak, tiptoe, strut, sniff. This is for four-legged creatures, which is really cool. So the difference between the walk and run. So walking would be A, running would be B, so tilted forward, and then fast running would be this kind of forward all, all in effect and you see the placement of the, the the legs is different so leg back leg together leg in front and then you would repeat that fast run a lot of times cartoons are denoted as having their hands out in front of them right when they're running it means that they're they're trying to chase after something so that's a really easy way to signify that you're running the strut so that's what this page is about so it's interesting so we so they had some number markers there one all the way to 42 the legs have reached the ground so we've got up uh, around and so we've got this movement forward and this progression. So it's so this is walking. So walking that direction, if you, if you think about that. So we read left to right, or we would look ref, left to right. So we're going like this, still walking. We go to the middle one, still walking. You can tell that one a lot easier there is walking. 
and then walking and we're getting ready to stop okay and then we stop right there so that's kind of the, the that's what they're explaining is that it can't really be changed because you've stopped here and then you'd have to start a different cycle again you don't loop, you don't loop that cycle like you would loop a bounce okay the skip right and so the skip is going to denote some air off the ground and some width in between the feet which is really cool so there's a couple of examples of that here then we have the sneak right low to the ground tiptoeing so you'd be really arched back and your toes would be up front on the ground so this is super cool i'm just going to get in here so you guys can check this out and feel free to just pause this wherever you guys want and just take notes. That's really why I'm doing this, not really to not really to review it. I'm just uh, here showing this to you, to kind of bring it out of the archive for you to check it out. Okay, the line of action and animation. So this is the same thing that I was talking about when I kind of made my character I showed you earlier. The line of action can show you how to set up your frame here. So we've got like this pitch effect, right? Where we're, we're leaning down, we're getting wound up, getting ready to throw a baseball. So that's kind of what it's showing you is that the line of action these curves and then we fill in these curves and that's how they would that, that's how they could do it really fast right so they would have their illustration on a pad they would flip that pad up right they would have that piece of paper right here start sketching come down look at it open sketch look at it open sketch right and so they could do these frames over and over and over again really really fast which is super cool all right we're coming to the end of the book here so we've got front and rear views of figures in movement so we've got a bunch here in the front. And again, I'm just showing this to you guys. Pause it wherever you think you wanna kind of check something, copy it. Dialogue, so open mouth, right? Dialogue would be open mouth. And we have a ton of really cool like open open things over here and how to say some of the words here, which is really cool. All right, then we just have more examples uh, that you can check out if you want. Kind of zoom in here and check them out. And then more examples in the illustration. So this reminds me of the alligator in Robin Hood, the animated Robin Hood. <laughs> and then now we're back at the back of the book. Uh, mine's a little ruined, but I thought it was still in great condition. So I wanted to pick it up and show you all pretty good condition, which I think is super dope. So I hope you all enjoyed that. It's just for you to check it out. And uh, let me know if you do anything with this. Let me, let me see your cartoons if you, if you do anything like that with it. All right, well, you've seen the book. Now you can animate like a Disney animator. Okay, right here on the back cover, it says you can draw. So so why not try right so it's a pretty cool step by step step by step process formula driven as you can see inside not the end-all be-all of drawing obviously but an amazing guide especially for beginners or even master illustrators that are trying to get that animated effect so it's really cool to see how they were doing it back then and how a lot of it still applies to drawing starting an illustration today so i hope it was helpful if it was give this video a like consider subscribing for other cool vintagey type stuff uh, if you didn't see the other walkthrough i did of a magazine the saturday evening post i'm gonna link it here for you to check out if you want any of the parts of the pieces i was using like the gloves or the foam blocks or even this little plastic case that i'm using to protect really old magazines um, you can check them out in the description again like the gloves and stuff like that i've got all that link super cheap it's an easy way to keep your old magazines and your old books intact from falling apart because your fingers have oils and it can damage the paper it can get even more brittle and that's not what we want we want to try to preserve it for as long as possible so if any of that interests you you can check it out in the description thanks again for watching i appreciate you taking the time just to hang out with me and look at cool illustration it means a lot thanks so much and i will see you in the next video